Hello and welcome back to our study of Penina Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yehuda Malamed Shlita. I hope everyone had a meaningful Tainus Esther. I think one of the highlights has to be the worldwide recitation of Kriyashma following the Tekas, the gathering at the Kotel, which was extremely moving, and Hashem should listen to all of our tefillahs. So please continue davening for Chalei Tzvagan Yisrael, Chalei Yisrael, safe return of all of our hostages. And as I've been mentioning all week, our learning is dedicated in memory of Daniel Shimon Peretz Ben Harav Doron Vishelli Hashem Yakum Damo. So this last chapter for the week, Mitzvah Latzir Shalom. Kasher Nitzrachim Yisrael Iftoch B'Melchama Neged Ir. If we have a requirement that we have to go to war against a certain nation or a certain city, Tzivza HaTorah Likro Latzir L'Shalom, the Torah first requires us that we have to make overtures of peace. Shen Amar Ki Sikrav El Ir L'Lachem Alev Akras El El L'Shalom. Pasuk in Devarim, the 20th chapter, says that you have to first reach out in peace. Hatsas HaShalom Perusha Hatsas Kenia. The mode of reaching out for peace means that we have to have a little bit of humility, a little bit of perhaps self-reckoning. The Pasuk there is some similarly. If you're going to have Shalom, you have to open up and everyone will hopefully sort of melt and serve you, meaning that you have to create a position where people are going to say, listen, you want to have shalom, then you're going to have to understand who's the boss. So when I say the lowering myself, you're saying our enemies have to lower themselves and say, you realize that we're going to have full control. You're going to have to pay taxes, and you're going to have to to whatever it is for the needs of the Jewish state. And we also have to establish and accept the foundations of faith and the principles of the community. Of course, the seven Noahide laws. And these are the seven mitzvahs. The big three. Idol worship, illicit sexual relations, and murder, and then Geneva, stealing, Birchas Hashem, you cannot curse Hashem's name, you cannot eat limbs from a live animal, and you have to set up a system of courts and judgments. And even before they go out to war, to destroy Amalek, apropos as we're heading into Parsha Zachor, so we still have to reach out with peace. We say, listen, do you want to accept the seven Noahide laws? And by doing so, then they will no longer be considered Amalek. And then they will, of course, be subjugated to the Jewish nation. They will pay taxes. And if they accept this condition of peace, then there's no need to go to war. But if they don't accept it, and then you have to fight against them. And a very important word here, ad kalosam, until the job is done. Many people in the world don't understand that we're fighting Amalek right now and they want us to just stop because it doesn't fit into their narrative or their lived experience or whatever woke term you want to use. But we have to finish the job because we know if we don't finish the job, and as I've been learning a great phrase lately, we don't put out 80% of a fire. If we don't finish the job, then we will have lost entirely. That's my own commentary that is not found in the Penina Halacha. Forgive me, I just can't help myself because there's only so much we can take. But I continue. And this is what Yehoshua did. In our Tuesday shir, which we're just about to complete, say for Yehoshua, so back at the beginning, in the beginning of the conquests, so he sent three letters to the Canaanite nations that were in the land. First he wrote, whoever wants to run away could run away. And who, the second letter he said, whoever wants to make peace should make peace. Whoever wants to go to war, whoever wants to fight, come and get it. The, the Girgashite nation, they decided to run away. They went to live in Africa. And they settled and everything worked out fine for them. 
ואם כן, לכאורה יש לי שלום, מדוע היו צריכים הגבעונים להערים ולעשות עצמם כאילו באו ממקום רחוק? So further later in chapter 9 of יהושע, we have the story of the גבעונים, who under some sort of ruse, they acted like they came from a faraway place and they asked for Israel's protection. Why do they have to create that subterfuge? לדסה רמב״ם מפני שרצו לכבוש בריסט עם ישראל, הרמב״ם says because they wanted to make a covenant, an agreement with the Jewish nation. ואילו השלום שהציעו להם יהושע לא היה כבריסט אלה שיהיו למס עבדים. But the shalom that יהושע would have been offering was not the type of covenant, but rather they would be like slaves or who were paying taxes. וכיוון שהגבעונים התאום, and since the גבעונים tricked and they deceived the Jewish people and Yehoshua, so therefore there was no obligation to keep that sort of covenant. But rather, if they would have abrogated the swear that they made to the princes of the nation, it would have caused the great desecration of Hashem's name. That's why they made the covenant. So in other words, we did it so for optics. We don't want to make a chil Hashem, but in actuality, they didn't have to. Ladas arrived, the rivet has a givonim yechulu l'kabla satzas hashalom calls mantri yisrael over us yardain. They said that the givonim could have accepted the overtures of peace and the offer that they made as long as they had not yet crossed the Jordan River. Ulam achar shavar hayardain kvar eschil amlachama v'ibdu asayz damus l'kabla satzas hashalom. But after the Jewish nation has already crossed the Jordan River, then the war has in effect started and they have lost the opportunity to accept these overtures of peace. Okay, this is a studies in the book of Yeshua, but just the main point that we have to always, before war, we try peace. And a further note, he says, is that if there is a possibility, if, there, if it's suspected that through overtures of peace that the enemy will take advantage of this and perhaps take us by surprise or create losses, then of course there's no need to have peace. So one would think of, let's say, the overtures of peace that the United States made with Japan, and Japan was making the United States before the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And certainly when we think of all the overtures of peace we've made to our enemies in the region of Israel over the last number of decades, which leads people to thinking, like, why do we even bother? We still try nonetheless, but again, it's based on this halacha, uh, to a certain degree, not getting into politics. The point is, is that we're not a nation that wants to go to war. And if we could avoid going to war, then certainly we will do so. But unfortunately, we find ourselves right now in a time of war, so we need to continue to daven for our soldiers, our brave soldiers of the IDF, Rafu Shalema for those who need a safe return of our hostages. And amidst all that, amidst all that, we want to make sure everybody tries to find a way to have Simchas Purim. So wishing everybody a Freil Kim Purim, Purim Sameach. Peaceful, restful Shabbos. Remember to hear Parsha Zachar this week at Tzachiv de Oresa. And we'll see you here next time. Thank you so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom.